So for this entry of my Halloween season vlogs, I'm going to jump ahead in time just a little bit. This was the last bit of a pretty crazy weekend that I had. And I feel like even though it's been at least at this point over a week since the actual event, I'd rather get this piece out first and then go back and do the first part. I left home on Friday morning, went down to Tampa for Hollow Scream Tampa at Bush Gardens. Then the next day went to do a family thing further south. And then the Sunday morning drove back up to Orlando for the Phantasm Horror Convention. And that's what this video is going to be covering, Phantasm. We'll go back in time next week or next episode. So... This is the second year they've had the convention. First time was in 2019. 2020 got canceled. But they brought back, I think, a large portion of the guests they were supposed to have for the 2020 that they'd announced. They brought them back for this one. Phantasm is kind of odd to me because Orlando already has a lot of conventions. And, you know, Megacon probably being the absolute largest that Orlando has to offer, as far as I'm aware. And then Spooky Empire being the big horror con, which just gets bigger and bigger every year and they do it twice a year and all that and spooky empire always has an event in october so having phantasm in both years it's happened it has also happened in earlier october than spooky empire has it feels a little weird it's kind of like they're encroaching on the turf of spooky and while i don't think it's unreasonable to have two different horror conventions and there are some things going on with phantasm that i think make it a nice supplement to the uh, convention scene in Orlando. I just think it's kind of odd that there are now two happening in the same month. And the thing that is setting Phantasm apart for me is the guests that they're bringing in. And I don't really know all the politics that go into getting guests for the conventions and what goes into that. I'm sure it's a lot more complex than I would even imagine. But there are certain guests that seem like they just will not go to Spooky Empire. And I don't know if it's the guests themselves or if it's the people handling them, the people that kind of represent them for the conventions. And especially this year, it seemed like all the people or a large majority of the people that were here are under Sean Clark's group. You know, he's a pretty big name in the horror scene. And part of what he does is to manage these different horror celebrities to bring them to different conventions. I want to say, like, for a while he was really big with the Walker Stalker thing and all those people. But he definitely has a lot more under his banner. And a lot of these have not been to Spooky Empire or any convention in the area recently that I'm aware of. And there were some names that I was really itching to get. And just to delay getting into the con proper even further, uh, I gotta say, the bane of my existence with this convention, I think, is the parking lot. <laughs> Last year I was really pissed off because they did not tell me going in that I had to pay for parking. And then when I went to leave, they were charging for parking. This time they at least fixed that end of it. When I pulled up to the hotel, which I think was like the Rosen Shingle Creek, I think was the name of it. There was a gate at the very entrance coming off of like the main drag that just was clarifying, you know, where you were going. And that guy basically, you know, I told him I was here for the horror convention. There were a bunch of cars in front of me. He's like, yeah, follow them. And I followed them and they all seemed to go kind of around the back of the hotel, which I thought was weird because that wasn't what they did last year. Turns out, I believe that was for the vendors or for something like that. Because it was literally going around to the loading bay in the back of the convention center area. I went back towards where it was last time. Found somebody who was actually taking like money for parking. And I figured I was in the right spot. But as I was a little early to the convention, it was kind of weird because I was not seeing uh, horror people. I wasn't seeing people in cosplay around. I wasn't even seeing people in like, you know, horror shirts or anything walking around. So I was a little confused where to go. There's no external signs on the building. Because basically it's like a hotel up on a hill almost. Not quite as a... Uh, Bates Motel as that sounds but yeah like a big hotel it's like raised up and then the convention center kind of comes out into the parking lot straight so I kind of like went around for a little bit trying to figure out where to go and then I eventually just walked into the convention center and it was a uh, pediatric nurses convention so definitely not a uh, horror thing this happened last year too there was like a very not horror themed convention happening in the same area and all these like quote-unquote normal people were walking through all of us horror nerds eventually i found there was a sign inside at least that pointed you up these escalators and over kind of like a hill a little like bump in the road into the convention area for phantasm first thing i saw was really cool they had some neat photo ops around they had a set up for halloween 3 with uh connell cochran as a mannequin and the three silver shamrock kids in front of it that was really neat there's an area off the side that had a couple life-size michael myers some other photo ops in there i think there was an escape room and an actual little mini haunt in there which was really cool i didn't get 
chance to go in there, but it was cool seeing like the display they had set up for everything. So the main hall was pretty limited. It was a decent number of vendors, but not tons of them. And then kind of in this middle area, in like a U shape of the vendor area, they had the autograph area, the celebrity area. And I went in with a list of people that I wanted to get autographs from. I also had my friend's book, the uh, one I've had in the channel before, the Alex Pardee doppelganger's book that he's been having get signed. I, I know I've gotten more signatures for him in that book than he's actually gone and gotten himself. So I kind of walked around for a little while. It was just when the con opened. The guests hadn't quite gotten down there yet. I don't think there were any celebrities when I first was down there. And eventually I saw a line starting to form for Nick Castle. And Nick Castle was the one that I was thinking of anybody He's going to have the longest line. You know, the original Michael Myers. We're getting really close to release of Halloween Kills. I don't know, maybe I was three or four people behind in line. And it was a very short wait until I got to go up and get his autograph. So as normal for my collection, I got an 8x10 of Michael Myers here. Signed by him with the shape written on it. Got my buddy's book signed. Got a photo with him. It's pretty cool. After talking to Nick Castle, right next to him was Sean Clark, had his own little booth. So I went up, I kind of just talked to him about Horror's Hallowed Grounds and stuff. He was talking about how the uh, Halloween Kills episode was different for him to do because he had to do it by memory from actually being on the set as opposed to having like a Blu-ray to watch and compare places. So I think that's gonna launch the weekend after the movie's out. So I'm pretty excited to see that. After that, there was still not a lot of guests out yet. So I was walking around a little bit. And as I was going kind of around, I saw that Tom Atkins was walking towards his booth. And I'd actually made myself a cosplay for this photo op. There is a rotten, or they call it like last night jack-o'-lantern mask from Party City. It's just kind of a rotten looking jack-o'-lantern. I took it and I glued some fake bugs on it to go a little more Halloween three with it so i was ready to get a photo with tom atkins for sure so got that got my halloween three eight by ten signed by him and there was a night of the creeps page in the book that my friend got signed and after a little more wandering around, I saw there was a line starting to build up for where James Jude Courtney's booth was. So I went and got in that line. Same people in front of me that were in front of me for Nick Castle. There were not many people on this day. And same drill. Got my 8x10. I was really having a hard time deciding whether I wanted to get something from H40 or Kills. I figured H40 was the safer bet since, you know, it's a known quantity to me. As opposed to kills which you know it could suck i don't think it's going to but it could so i went with h40 got my photo with him got my friend's book signed on the michael myers page last one for that book for this con after that i went over to will sandon's booth played the original young michael myers figured i already had a douchebag who insults his fans uh what's his name again tony moran uh and then i got nick castle so out of the major people that played Michael Myers, this was another one that I feel like I needed. Too bad Tommy Lee Wallace was supposed to be at this con and he backed out. Granted, I think I would have probably had some Halloween 3 signed from him. And then obviously Deborah Hill, I'm never going to get that autograph. So yeah, about as close as I was able to get to this point with Michael Myers from the original. And I'm pretty happy with the, the three. And then that was all the autographs that I went in intending to get. But I have some of the female victims autographs from the original Halloween. It's one of the few movies I get like victim character autographs from as a rule, more or less. But um, John Michael Graham, who plays Bob, he was there, so I decided to get his autograph as well. So, I mean, I know I'm never going to get, like, Jamie Lee Curtis to sign something, so I don't think I'm ever going to really complete that set. But, I don't know, Victims from the Original Halloween, I feel like it's it's a fun exception to have to my uh, autograph collecting rule. Went around the vendor room a bit. The only thing I really bought was there was a booth that had a lot of Trick or Treat Studio stuff. I bought the You Need a Medical Supply metal sign. There's so nothing too exciting there. And then uh, the YouTube channel Grim Life Collective, they had a booth there. So I got to talk to them for a little bit. Also talked to them about like going out and finding locations from movies and how they go about filming that and all that. Because I'm still working on that Creature from the Black Lagoon project. That'll probably never be done at this rate. But it was kind of nice to talk to them about like their ideology going into all that and how they go about doing it that was definitely fun i got a few stickers from them as well and that was about it really short not a lot of people there and i don't know if that's because people are like more loyal to spooky empire whether this thing's not as well advertised as maybe it should be whether i was gonna say maybe people had bad experiences last time but you know what it was empty last time too so i don't really know i don't know the answer it was a cool con there was nothing bad about it in the least from my experience at least i think it was an improvement over the first year which it should be you know being a second year con obviously they're gonna learn from some things and make things better but you know they had some guests that i would consider really big gets for a con but like i said because spooky empire hasn't had these guests in a long time or ever for some of them i thought 
that this would be a big draw. I thought this thing was gonna be packed full of people. I figured I was gonna be waiting hours in line for some of those autographs. And maybe I waited half an hour total for all the autographs. And some of that was waiting because people literally hadn't even gotten to their booth yet. I guess if I was gonna say anything, I would say that it's not a weekend con yet. I am mean, granted, I'm a person who doesn't do a lot of the panels and things, so my opinion may be a little skewed. But I don't know if I'd stayed there like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, done the full weekend, if I wouldn't have gotten a little bored at some point. Granted, there was a lot of other things that I didn't do. Like I said, a little haunt in there. The panels I didn't do any of. They had a film festival. You know, a lot of the different things that a lot of cons offer as well. But for what I went for, for what I wanted to do, after about two hours, I felt good about leaving. Like I wasn't really second guessing it. And a lot of that is because I was able to get what I wanted very quickly. It's not like, oh yeah, I'm done. Get me the hell out of here. But yeah, I don't know. It's kind of weird. Like, I don't know how to describe it. I don't know how to do it justice because it definitely wasn't bad in the least. But it really just felt like it hasn't made the next step to make it like a full-blown, full-weekend con or something. But I don't know. We'll see. I'm hoping they come back next year. I would kind of love it if they moved when they have it. Put it in the summer or put it even in September or something. Just to space it out a little further from Spooky Empire. But I am excited to see how this thing grows and where it goes from here. So I'll be back soon with a video on the Bush Gardens Hello Scream event. That was a lot of fun and I can't wait to talk more about it. But uh, I felt like this was a little more time sensitive since Hello Scream is going on continuously and this was a one weekend thing. So decided to mix up the timeline just a little bit. But I will see you guys next time. Later.